So I'm going to read a few poems from my book and a few newer poems. This one's from the book and it's got a line in it, my boy insists. And I don't want you thinking I'm a pushover as a parent, so you might insist, but that doesn't mean he's going to get his own way. Although it can be hard to resist the enthusiasms of a six-year-old as he was then. Can you hear me okay? Mm -hmm. Yep. It's the naked words now, isn't it? <laughs> Funky music. Relic. I'd rather take this road to that chapel of larch on the hill, but my boy insists, so we step into a nave of pines, screened by webs where sound falls dead, except for the rattle of cones. Each breath is sealed with resin. He finds a long bone, lifts it from the needles. Fox, or maybe badger, I tell him, taking his hand, suddenly aware of our temporary skins. I live at the end of a road, uh, well, it's not the end, but anyway, yeah, I live on a road, there's a stable further down the road, and um, you get a lot of four-legged traffic past the window in the last 20 years, I've heard a lot of horses going by. This is called The Horses. In the first bright slew of laughter and bedclothes, we hear them, and cars slowing to pass, the drifting talk of their riders. They clop through gathering dark as lights come on and the baby kicks and dreams inside you. Hooves break the skin of our sleep, wake us to green shoots or rusted leaves, to shoe prints in early frost, a puddled road and soft scatterings. The boy grows tall and oversleeps as we lie tangled or back to back, while the phone brings news of a slipping away, a collapse into nearly nothing. Blossom is blown to blizzard. Blackbirds return to nest in clematis. But always we hear horses, though we never know their barrel flanks, the sway and tilt of a saddle back as they trot through the days of promise, arrival, exit. For um, about 10 years, I was uh, a nurse working in a coronary care unit and I've written um, a sequence of poems about that time. I'd just like to read you a few of those. I forgot to say, wow, what an incredible place. That's what I prepared to say, because I'd seen a picture of it, but it's even more magnificent when you see it. So thank you for inviting me. Tremendous. This is called Carrying the Arrest Fleet. It's cool at first to feel it weighting my pocket, to be, to be wired to a voice swathed in static, to run through empty corridors, past a gallery of night black windows, to fly down stairwells that smell of dust drifting in the hospital's concrete heart, to be joined by junior doctors going hell for leather over walkways, the city below sunk in 3 a.m. quiet, our feet skidding in corners, bursting through doors into the light of a ward where our slap pads to a chest, get busy with compressions and the drawing up of drugs. The buzz wears off with each heart pumped or shocked. Paper thin skin over prominent ribs, grey chest hair and deflated breasts. All our futures laid bare in a strip lit bay, the whole scene lasting far too long. And when the registrar asks if we agree to stop, I meet his eye and nod. Trace. fingers walked to the fourth intercostal space. This is where I placed the first gel-backed tab. The next went opposite, across the sternum, on the nipple line. Easy then to make a descending arc. Attach the leads until a trace appeared, a heart. Unlike in films, when it stopped for good, the line was never completely flat, but wavering like the slap of water against the dock long after a boat has passed. And another thing. In films, the lips stay shut, but in real life, or real death, the jaw drops, the mouth gapes. 
Muscle can't stay tense in the absence of a pulse. I just wanted to tell you. I believe the, the rock band The Who are on tour again uh, this year. So uh, I think Pete Townsend will probably be doing his windmill thing, you know, where he does his power cord. Be careful. Um, you'll see why better be careful. That, that action features in this poem, which is called Digits. The Pete Townsend windmill, shattering a lampshade made of thick glazed pots when I was drunk and 18, was a near thing. Had the tendons not been rejoined, what I'd have missed most, now I think about it, are the two I pressed into the frog slack spot under the jaw of the man whose heart had stopped, holding them there for ten long seconds, searching for a carotid throb. Nor could I have coaxed rock and roll from a gut-strung acoustic at that party where we watched from the decking as the sun ran its fingers through the buzz cut of a lawn and me, the catalyst, inspiring a raft of dawn survivors into bird-startling song. I was eating cheese a bit late one evening and um, I think I'd watched Hugh Fernley Whittingstall's Big Fish Fight where he was trying to stop to get the discard of fish. It was quite successful, actually. It was a couple of years ago. And I think I also saw a bit of uh, Doctor Who, not a big fan, but I just happened to catch it. And I think these three factors came together to make this poem. I like to think I've invented a new genre called eco-horror eco poetry. <laughs> the catch. They came in summer, whole shoals flashing across the dish of the moon, bound inland, breaking from waves to skip shale and harbour walls. Some snagged on fences where they telegraphed the onrush of death to uneasy farm dogs. Others leaping hedges to rain bullet nosed onto bonnets, jellied eyes smearing cracked windscreens where drivers shook indented wrecks, lap deep in heads and tails, while others hit the suburbs, poured through cat flaps, dropped down vents to drown sleepers in basement flats, splashed into reservoirs, guided by miles of pipes to fly up between the legs of those making night visits in sleeping Midland towns. We knew it would come to this. We knew it as we laid our nets. <coughs> Beyond North. I didn't know until recently that um, waves can freeze, so somebody sent me a postcard of frozen waves from a place that was very northern. Beyond North. I'd go there too if all I'd known was walked or riven to a place of undiluted light where the wind comes naked after its flight across the sea. I could work building hatches to batten, break firewood open on the blade of an axe, slap up gold-splattered stone in a new coat of white. I'd throw grain for the all-important chickens, majestic in their suits of henna and rust, their feet lifted high and placed so carefully as if the grass might hurt. I understand that the language of rain is common and that snow is often spoken, particularly at night. I'd like to wake to the silence of still waves, white horses hitched and rock tethered under a sky of ice. Thank you very much for listening. Um, this is <laughs> this is a true story, it's called Instant Karma. The office cleaner sings beautifully and in Hindi. I ask her what her song means. The Lord says, I will give you what you want when the time is right. She leaves a world bright with belief, the mopped floor under my feet, the empty bin of me.